Most languages in the world have masculine and feminine distinctions. English does not. It doesn't have words that are distinctly male or female. The word justice doesn't have a male form and a female form. Okay, it's just justice. The Book of Mormon was translated from Reformed Egyptian, which basically means it was a combination of Hebrew and Egyptian. Guess what? Both Hebrew and Egyptian do have masculine and feminine terminology. They have words that are distinctly male and female. So what happens when you are translating from a language that does have gender-specific terminology into a language like English that does not have male or female verbs? Well, you get scriptures like this. Behold, justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy claimeth all which is her own. Why is this really important? You have to remember the process. Okay, when Joseph Smith was translating the Book of Mormon, he was looking at seer stones. He was looking at some rocks. And for two to eight hours a day, he would look at these stones and just tell this story. Somebody else would write down what he has dictated. So not only in his early 20s with a formal education that stopped at third grade, did he have to be able to look at some stones and just tell a story? speak for two to eight hours a day for 65 working days straight and have that story not only make sense but have no contradictions no mess ups of the names it just flows and works not only does he have to do that but he also apparently would have to have been familiar enough with both Hebrew and Egyptian to know that, hey, I'm supposed to be translating this from those languages. And in those languages, these words that I'm about to make up for this story, those are male or those are female. So I have to properly translate them and give them a specific gender identification. For example, like this verse that I've just read, where it says, justice exerciseth all his demands and also mercy claimeth all which is her own. So he would have had to be so familiar with these languages. It is my understanding that you have mastered the languages of all the indigenous population from here to the Pacific. Who told you this? That he could properly translate, he could properly use male and female distinctions of every single, in every single instance. Ha 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 ha! Why do I laugh? You see, of the hundreds of language that I speak fluent, this is not one of them. In every single instance, it correctly matches both Hebrew and Egyptian. There's no evidence anywhere that he knew and spoke Hebrew and Egyptian. There's not even evidence that he'd ever even seen the languages. But there are many, many accounts and testimonies of people saying, Joseph Smith could not write or dictate a well-worded letter in English, let alone in another language. There's just no way that he could do this, guys. Like, how could he accurately use male and female distinctions in every single instance if he were just making this up? Now again, this is not a foundational testimony piece. That's not going to be enough to just convince somebody, oh yeah, it absolutely has to be true. But if you have read the Book of Mormon and you have felt the Holy Ghost testify that it's true, all of these little things that I'm sharing in these videos, they add up, they solidify that foundation. The reason that they match the correct distinction in every single case is because it happened the way he claims it did. This isn't the work of Joseph Smith. This is the work of God. This is the work of God to help bring each of us closer to the Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you will study the Book of Mormon side by side with the Bible, you will gain a greater testimony of the Savior and of His Gospel than you could attain in any other way. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.